bags are packed are you ready to go this time tomorrow we'll be on the road riding with you in the sunnier days I wouldn't want it any other Welcome to yet another chapter of Children of Erte. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. Um, first up, as usual, we will send it over to Adam, who'll tell us about our sponsors. Oh, Adam, you're muted. How will we know about the sponsors? <laughs> we have we idol have champions. Idol champions. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna dub it. Today. Lauren, do you want to jump in? Yeah. <laughs> um, Idol Champions of the Forgotten Realms. You can uh, catch an Electrum chess code on the overlay or bouncing around in chat. Grab that. We love this game and thank you so much for your support. And if you're coming from that game, stick around and figure out what is going on. I'm not sure that the players or the characters know what's going on, but um, maybe you as the audience will succeed where we have failed. Um, and also we have Die Hard Dice who has given us, uh, we're going through the alphabet with these. And, uh, you know, some, some are winners and some are less winners. But today, um, <laughs> Die Hard Dice has given us health handlers that we are all uh, rolling. This is, I can't okay. wait to get to X, by the way. Um, but uh, health handlers that we are rolling. Thank you so much, Die Hard Dice and Marcus Reedner for mm -hmm. um, the the uh, really scraping all of what they're you all winners, Marcus. They're that, all winners. All all winners. Some are just winners more than others, <laughs> but um, but but thank you nonetheless, and uh, thank you, Die Hard Dice. You can pick up ten percent off an order with the code Erte at Die Hard's shop, and then also we have Sirenscape because Epic Games need <laughs> Epic Sound. And I am Adam Bradford. I'm the CDO here at Demiplane. You can catch me on Twitter at Bad Eye Adam. We have so many exciting things going on. Every day is an adventure working here for Demiplane. And uh, many of the things we can't even talk about yet. So just uh, check out Dev Updates on Tuesdays with me. And here in the uh, next couple of months, I promise uh, some big, big news that you haven't seen from us yet. Uh, in addition to news on all the other things, cool things that we have announced and the progress we're making there. So uh, check that out on Tuesday mornings at 9 a.m. Pacific. Yay. Oh, and I'm playing Silas Jordan. I forgot that part, <laughs> but that is why we're here now, playing Silas Jordan. And uh, he is he is terrified right now. Let's see how it goes. <laughs> Hi uh, hey everybody, I'm Alicia Marie, and I'm Alicia Marie, uh, Alicia Marie Body on socials. I'm a professional custom artist, stylist, and improv performing artist, um, as well as this show on Friday nights. I'm part of the Radiant Stories cast, along with a couple of familiar faces here. And uh, beginning in August, I'm part of the Voyages of the Jump cast on the Glass Cannon Network. I have a little bit of a voice issue because I spent too much time speaking this weekend. So just <sighs> just just pretend she's just a little raspy from all the cave air and everything that's going. <laughs> we'll just we'll work with it. Very good. You, you sound great. Right. You sound very <laughs> resonant. Yeah. Uh, tonight I am playing ten foot statue Steve fighting for Ruza Armstrong. <laughs> Steve is somewhere. He's just clomping <laughs> around somewhere. And, and then Steve. after all of this, we're going to meet him for coffee one day. And he's going to be like, you know, my name is actually Norm. I, I just didn't want to correct him. Just being polite. Yeah. Yeah. Hi, I am Jen Kretschmer. You can find me on Twitter as at DreamWisp. You can find me streaming on Twitch as DreamWisp Jen. Wednesdays, you can find me uh, over on um playing Vampire the Masquerade uh, for the nightlife. And then on Fridays, you can find me playing Radiant on the Radiant Stories uh, cast. Those, those weren't words. I, I swear they're words in my head. <laughs> <laughs> Friday, Friday, Radiant Stories with some of these lovely people. Yeah. 
It's just the order sometimes. Yeah, so. yeah it's just all <laughs> over the place. Um, I am all over the place because on Thursday, I am giving a keynote address at the Generation Analog Conference. I'll be talking about accessibility in gaming um, and embodiment and all sorts of interesting stuff, hopefully interesting stuff. Um, so please check that out. The tickets are free and it's going to be a fantastic conference. Lots of interesting topics all throughout. But tonight, I am playing Maeve Morgan Flynn, your friendly neighborhood troublemaker. <laughs> Hi, I'm Lauren Urban. I'm the content coordinator over at Idle Champions of the Forgotten Realms. You can find me on Twitter as Obolorin, where you can find all the other stuff that I do, which includes some of the shows that we've talked about here. Also includes some Oboe stuff every once in a while. It also includes me here tonight playing Neb, <laughs> who might not know what's going on, but is having fun figuring it all out. Uh, I like that. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, I'm Hope Lavelle. You can follow me on Twitter at the Hope Lavelle. I'm a motion capture performer by day and by night. I am a D&D enthusiast. And tonight I will be playing Miss Robin Beckett, who has figured things out. But okay, what did you say, Lauren? I'm doing the opposite of what you said. <laughs> <laughs> and, and having, having a lot having of fun. a very good time. And having the best time. This is amazing. Uh, Robin oh, is God. currently a uh, making sure that she can still be a sign language translator, which it seems ah. with just that bit of healing Steve the statue has given her, that it's going to be fine. <laughs> well, you got to spend a little bit of time with a, uh, a spirited hummingbird for a yes. while. That was, Ooh, that was yeah. not unfun. Yeah, no, she's having a blast. <laughs> and then one day that hummingbird is going to be like, my name is Norm, but... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but Harold, you know, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> and I am Deborah Amwell. I am your storyteller for this evening. I am an actor and a writer and a D&D RPG board game tabletop enthusiast. Um, you can find me all over many different places. Uh, but tonight, let's get settled in and cozy as we begin the 16th chapter of Children of Airtay. Thank you very much, players, for being here. Thank you, everyone at home. <laughs> Where we left off, <laughs> yes, Robin and Faruza had bravely faced Steve the statue. Uh, they had uh, bypassed, uh, released him, really, uh, and he walked off somewhere into the caverns. We're not sure where, but they were able to discover <laughs> the code on level four, as well as translate it. So you know how the code from level four and level three. Um, uh, they are now on their way, returning back towards the more known areas of the uh, caverns. Silas, Neb, and Maeve, you all uh, made your way finally out of this now water-filled uh, stope uh, where <laughs> the gold once was, and uh, have climbed across into a tunnel on the other side. You are now making your way upwards when you came across a strange creature that attacked you. Um, after a, a quick sort of investigation of it, once you had defeated it, uh, determined that it was mostly attracted by sound. It was also had grippy fingers and able to sort of climb the walls a little bit. Um, as you were doing so, even though you had turned off your music uh, that you would use to distract this creature, you began to hear noises of more, but this time approaching from behind you, from the direction that you were coming from, and you had just turned tail and were beginning to climb as quickly as you could uh, in the opposite direction. So... <laughs> Some of us literally turned tail. Quite literally, yes, that's right. I believe we still have a Nebrat uh, with yeah. us. Ne um, Neb wolf. I oh, Neb wolf. That's right. You're you're a wolf. You're a, a not a not a giant wolf, but a a, nah. a, a uh, sort of how cute. Uh, Hugh more uh, <laughs> our world uh, sized wolf. Um, that's right. Mm -hmm. That's right. In the in the uh, the cabin. So let's actually pick up with the three of you to start with, since you have the uh, <laughs> the largest cliffhanger here going on. Um, so yes, as you begin to turn and make your way, continuing following this sort of channel of caves, um, and you do hear just the clicking from behind you and every once in a while, maybe a kind of hiss um, that echoes its way through and you do get the sense that they are gaining on you. There are more of them. We've got to get up that hole. There might be more up there too but we know there are behind us. Neb's just going to nod and wolf and keep yeah. going. So you're moving. Is there any stealthing you're wanting to do? Are you wanting to make speed or are you wanting to be quiet? 
Silas is absolutely not caring about quietness right now. Okay. Um, and so he is he is going to, as quickly as he can, try to get up through the opening that we were going to climb down. And the very first thing I'm looking for is something very large that can still possibly be moved by us. Okay, gotcha. Um, so I will say, so it, I think it was Neb, you were kind of in front, followed by Maeve, followed by Silas. So Silas very quickly catches up with the rest of you. You know, you are all hearing what's coming, but he was closer to it. Um, so it sort of continues to motivate you forward. Um, as you continue to climb, Neb, are you staying in wolf form for now? As long as I can, because I feel like she's figured out that maybe this form is slightly faster than okay. her. And, and so while she's still getting used to being a wolf, if Silas is, yeah. let us get out of here, she's going to stay with the four legs instead of two. Okay, great. Maeve, you good? You're joining up and- I'm good. All yeah, right. The three of you in your, you know, in the order you're in, begin to scramble as quick as you can through these rocks. Um, you do hear, you start to hear, there's quite a few of them. Um, and as you're moving forward, finally, Silas, up ahead, as you look past the other two in front of you, you can see a fairly large sized hole um, sort of opening up into what must be a larger space up above. Um, uh, Neb, you will approach that space first. Um, there is no light beyond, but you can see that like it's just dark so that your light from, I guess you don't have a headlamp anymore, but the headlamps from the other two <laughs> that light up that area just hit nothing beyond that hole. I I think she just goes for it. Burst through? Like, yeah, yeah, we're, we're running essentially and yeah. there's no time to waste. So she just gets there and jumps. As you jump out of this hole, you land on ground that is a little bit slanted and covered in loose shale. So these sort of uh, flat rocks that have sort of broken away from the remaining rock that begin to slip almost like gravel under your feet as your, your little, you know, wolf legs begin to scramble against them as you slide slowly down, unable to grab purchase. Please give me a dexterity saving throw. Okay. This might be the moment where I'm glad that I stayed as a wolf because <laughs> the wolf has way better dexterity. Uh, okay, so that is uh, a 12. A 12. So up above, Maeve, Silas, you see Neb just fly out of this hole. Suddenly there's this scrambling of rock and <laughs> as Neb, unable, you're unable to stop your slow descent as you kind of are pulled down and down. You're now beginning to lose sight of the hole above. Maeve, you were next. Uh, can, can I clarify? Yes. Is uh, Neb coming back towards us no. or another opening? So um, it's almost as if this opening breaks into a slanted surface. Neb burst through, landed on the slanted surface, and is now beginning to sort of slide. So we can't actually see her you can't doing see that. Her. We, you we just hear heard it. That. Understood. Yes. Okay, got it. Uh, I'm going to try and. I suppose, jump up to kind of pull myself up to see. All right. As, as you pull your around. head up into the space, it is indeed quite a large cavern. And as you cast your headlamp around, suddenly down below you, you see the frightened wolf face with a little bit of blue in its hair as it looks up at you again, scrambling, unable to get a price. Rope. I am producing the rope and getting it to Maeve as quickly as I can. <laughs> I'm Maybe we have the rope, throw throwing it. it. All right, oh, fantastic. Yes. Okay, um, I need a, uh, let's do a, Ooh, what do we want to do? Um, let's do I don't really want to do it, but I'm here for it. We're going to do a ranged attack for a hit. <laughs> so give me okay. a dexterity check, essentially. Okay. So a d20 plus your dex, um, and, and we'll see if you can hit her. <laughs> Get it's it a d20. In that's a dirty 20. You throw the end of this rope. It lands right in front of you. A good coil of it, Neb. You're able to get your paws onto it and sort of stand on there. Now, you can't grip it. You could bite it, I suppose. Yeah, yeah. I I thought we were going to play fetch for a second. So yeah, as soon as it lands, I think she's Arm! and grabbing it. You grab right on. All right, strength saving throw. Okay. Uh, those jaws, you got powerful dog jaws. Yeah, powerful dog jaws, but really bad rules. Uh, strength saving. Advantaged, advantaged, advantaged. Okay, all right. Go ahead. I'm giving it to you. Advantaged. Grab and climbing kit. 
uh, way better. It's yeah. still not amazing, but that's a 12. <laughs> okay, we'll take that. It's still um, way better than a uh, human neb. <laughs> yes. It would be way worse. <laughs> So you chop down on this rope and it's taking everything you have. I mean, Maeve, as you look down, you can see the muscles in Neb Wolf's jaws just quivering a little bit as they just chop down, trying to hold. Um, and you can feel it's taking everything you have, all of your weight to sort of bear down and, and, and keep Neb from sliding much further. Uh, so Neb, you can't, it's too hard to climb back up, but you've stopped your descent for the moment. I, I think she'll kind of wait another moment or two because she's under the assumption we're trying to get out of this hole. She doesn't want yeah. to go back to it. Oh, yeah. So. You can still hear from beyond. Just the hope is to get you stabilized a bit. We, we've got to keep going. I don't know what's down there, but I do know what's behind us. Um, so looking up and over, yes. what what can I see now? Um, so looking down past Neb as you're taking a quick glance, uh, give me a, just a quick perception check. Let me see how much you see. 11. 11. Um, it's, it's darkness, but you get the sense that it's not empty darkness, that it is, um, that whatever you're looking at is black. Black as night. And that you can't identify it, but you can see that this ends relatively soon, maybe 30 feet from where you are. Um, but you can't you can't figure out what it is. It could be black rock. I mean, uh, rock in a hard place here, but a slippery place here. I choose hard um, place. All right. <laughs> um, Knowing that it's all slippy slidey, yes. does Neb have any purchase now, or is um, she Neb? Still Neb, um, yes, we'll go ahead and say that. Holding on, Neb. Now that you're stopped, you can kind of move your paws around to get to the point where you feel like you're you're dug in a little bit, uh, so you're no longer sliding in the shale. I've just got all four legs just splayed, yeah, splayed. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm making hardcore eye contact with you, waiting to find out what we're doing next. All right, I'm going to try and go over and knowing that that's there, be cautious yes. as, I, as I set myself down. Okay, great. Um, wonderful. We're going to call this difficult terrain. Um, okay. But so, but as long as you are taking your time, you will not slide. Um, so yes, as you sort of come out, uh, are you attaching the rope to anything? Are you just holding it yourself? Are there, no any, longer... are there any locks or, or pitons or anything here? Silas there is no... definitely still holding it. Uh, Sorry, right. Silas is holding yeah. the rope on the inside? Yeah. Okay. Um, so yes, I mean, there are rocks and things, there's no other pitons, but there are rocks and things you could certainly attempt to, to slash it around. Uh, sure. Let's create an anchor, an anchor point. Okay. Okay. So we'll say again, using the techniques you have, this is all going as fast as you possibly can. Uh, Maeve stops Neb from sliding, looks down at Silas. Silas, you're holding the other end of the rope. You start to tie a knot and sort of loop it over some sort of rock nearby that you think will hold. Maeve, you then climb out and very carefully are able to start making your way wherever you'd like to go. Silas. Uh, so how big is the opening that we are emerging from? It's, right it's a good size. It's definitely, you know, three or four feet across. And I imagine I don't see anything in this room that we're trying to emerge from as I try to make it up. Uh, it's a tunnel. Yeah, it's just still it's still the tight, you know, kind of rock climby spelunky tunnel. So nothing that would plug this hole. From here, no. you stick your head out. Give me a me looking for something specific. You can give me an investigation. Uh, you can roll that. And that should be a four. You see nothing. This is just loose shale. It's just pebbles. Okay. You know, flat rocks. Great for skipping. Terrible for plugging up holes. Yeah. Um, all right. I'm going to come out and see if there is anything else in this uh, space. Basically try to figure out as much as I can move half my speed, yep. uh, try, trying to uh, figure out if there is any kind of exit from this room. All right. Uh, as you move out to the space, now you can see that it, it comes, it's almost like a wedge. So the ceiling is very, very low up above you, but as it, as it sort of slopes down, uh, it gets a little bit higher. Um, as you begin to make your way down towards this area about now, 
30 feet from the hole, 15 feet from where Neb is. As you get closer to where Neb is, you can see this looks very much like this oozy black substance that you found on the surface. A whole puddle of it. Now, as you get, it depends how you want to go down. If you want to get any closer, you can see that just across the way, probably about five feet over a pool of this stuff, there's continuing of this passage. Do I notice this now that I've stabilized yeah. and maybe Silas is going to- You can okay. all start to sort of see this as you get down in this is this area. And how how high is the um, tunnel that we're in right now? This would be, uh, this would be, this where you are right now, probably has a good 10 foot, 10 foot height above it, above you. Is I it still... practical at all to try to go over whatever this thing is? Um, investigation. You want me to roll it? Yes, please. Four. What's your four? Didn't it reach out and grab stuff though before? It was slow, but yeah, a little bit. It, it, but it was it slow. Had some arms. Well, there uh, <laughs> could be some misdirection involved. So as you look up at the sea, you know, you get your footing. You realize what this puddle is down here. You begin to kind of look up at the ceiling. The first thing you notice is a round circle of metal in the ceiling. And as you look up, uh, you can see this ooze is all around this sort of hole. It's dripping down the sides. It's covering the ceiling. Um, and you're getting flashbacks of all that cell phone footage. Mm -hmm. You're pretty sure you're at the bottom of the ventilation tube. You said the the pool is yeah. about five feet to jump across it? Mm-hmm. That's I've all. I've still Just got the rope. Feet. Yeah, I got the rope in my jaws. I'm going to take the rope with me and, like, so that I could help when I get to the other side. I want to jump. You're just going to jump it? Amazing. Yeah. Fantastic. Give I'm me just an athletics check as well, or a strength check as a puppy. I, I hope I'm a, an adult dog. You're an adult. <laughs> well, we'll see. We'll see. Puppy. Okay. Okay. I call my eight year old dog a puppy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's fair. That's super fair. That's a dirty 20. It's a dirty 20. So before any of you can do it, as you begin to hear this clicking get loud and an arm shoots up out of the hole behind you, 15 feet up, and the head. <sighs> its sharp teeth begins to stick up through the hole behind. Neb takes off, slipping and sliding on the shale, leaps into the air, jumping, sailing across this five-foot gap of oily, terrible. As she does, you see little sort of, almost like the reverse of drips. If it were on the ceiling and it were dripping down, it's almost like it's defying gravity. It attempts to drip up and grab at her legs. Ooh. Ooh, I think you might be fine, but let me double check here. Ooh, maybe not. 14? Ah, oh, the pizza by one, yeah. Oh, oh no! Yeah. Okay, it's okay. Hold on. Okay. That is five um, acid damage. Okay. <laughs> As it doesn't grab you, but you just feel it along your, your you know, little wolf leg along your paw, a little bit of the hair just gets singed off and your skin burns a little bit as you land on the other side, favoring it, not wanting to put that paw down. But you are over with the rope in your mouth, I, you know, immediately pulling it taut. I assume you don't want it to land. Yeah, I'm going to yeah. anchor myself as yeah. much as possible so that I can help get the two of them across okay um so it you know it was fairly high up so it's it's at this like downward angle from that hole up above you just are able to pull it taut so that it is no it is not sinking into the ooze below uh Maeve and Silas uh you see Neb make it across but you also see this thing reach up and sort of swipe at her as she goes by and now next to the rope at that hole you see a creature pushing its way through. Another arm comes up behind it, a second creature trying to pull itself up around the top. I wonder. Stampede? <laughs> <laughs> is that where we're going? <laughs> well, I was thinking maybe we use the shale to create sound to drive them into the puddle. Yeah, definitely try to get them into the puddle. But, Almost like um, skipping stones. We don't need to be around it when that happens. Right. 
Neb has suddenly figured out how to growl. She's on the other side, <laughs> rope playing, figuring I, I, out how to play tug of war. I think Neb's got the right idea. Here. I think I think she's got the right idea if we can make it. All right. Uh, you so go ahead, Costa. Want me to give you boost or I uh, a boost perhaps? Not not throw me. Please well, don't throw uh, me. Yeah. <laughs> like I'm... That, that's what I meant by boost. All or right. Yeah. Uh, Leg or I foot will... or? Sure, give uh, off of my foot. Okay. Um, um, and sort of trying to almost do a. a Kind of like a balletic leap, almost. Okay. Almost the grand jeté. Over. Are you using the rope in any way? Is this just a jump? Yes. With so I'd like phyluses? to use the rope to help myself. Okay, to help. So then, if they don't, range. you've got a, you've got an anchor point. Okay, great. So holding on to that rope, you begin to dash forward, and Silas, you're gonna try to give a like a hand for the foot and push, kind of thing. Yeah, the kind. Of, I, so is is it higher? I, I'm, I'm having trouble visualizing. You totally. said that Neb is over the other side. Yes, and she's lower now. Well, she's lower than where the where the rope is anchored. Okay. Because this sure. is, you know, it's like it's literally like a, a beach, a a, a a beach going into the water, right? The 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 pool yeah. of ick is you know level, and then there's a gradual slope coming up. The but hole then the, that you came out is higher up. How high is the rope above the uh, uh, puddle? Well, where, you know, uh, probably where you guys are, it's a good six feet above the puddle, but down where Neb is, it's more like wolf height. <laughs> so, right. you know, maybe three feet. Okay. All right. Maybe. Okay. All right, Maeve, athletics check, please, with advantage. Well, no, we're going to do it this way. Athletics check with um, Silas's strength added to it, uh, basic strength modifier. And then you'll have the rope to help you if there's a problem. So So 17. 17, Silas, what's your modifier? That's with Silas. Oh, that's with Silas's strength modifier. Fantastic. Okay, so the 17, you run forward, Silas, you know, pushes your leg as best as he can, giving you that extra leverage, allowing you to just leap, holding on, letting the rope just slide through your fingers so that you can grab on if you need it, but you slide right through landing very gracefully right next to Neb, um, uh, who, you know, may or may not nuzzle you a little bit as you. And Silas just lets out a woo! That's right! As you do, three of the heads sticking out One of them begins to come out now, sliding down the shale in your direction. It'll make contact with you any second. Uh, uh, Silas is following. Just uh, jumping. Uh, Silas is actually going to, if he can, um, he is going to um, swing up onto the rope and walk it like a tight rope. And he just yells out, "Hold on, really tight." Oh boy! I'm gonna as super tight as I can. Oh boy! Okay, so let's start with an acrobatics uh, check from you, Silas. All right. Um, yes, that's a 19 on the that's die. 19. So, so that you successfully. Is... Sorry, that I, no, uh, yeah, ahead. it's a 23. 23. 23. You successfully, gracefully, and quite showmanshipy uh, fly up landing on top of this rope. However, Neb immediately. <laughs> <laughs> the weight of that pulling against you. Can you please give me a strength saving throw? Okay. 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 The, the 11? 11. Oh, as he lands, you're pulled forward under the weight of that as it begins to pull you towards that pool of black ichor again. Are you letting go? No. No, you no, are no. You're not letting go. No, I'm not dropping him into the ichor. I'm, I'll start to scramble back and try to regain my footing, but I'm not letting okay. go. Give me a, a strength check to see if you can pull back against Silas's weight. Okay. While, Silas, you feel yourself sinking, you know, Oh, 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 too, too, too much, too much meat. Sorry about that, Neb. Uh, that's better. That's a 15. A 15. Neb, you stop yourself like a Looney Tune character, inches from the edge, you know, just My digging My butt your lands nails. on the ground as I just... Yes. 
digging your nails in as you pull yourself back. Your teeth look like they're gonna pull out of your, you know, jaw. Um, as Silas, you sort of wobble back and forth, trying to hold your balance as these creatures now come up underneath you. You are about six feet in the air. They are below as one jumps, hoping to grab at your leg. 17 to hit you. Yes. Okay. Ooh. That's nine slashing. <sighs> okay. Nine slashing as it reaches up and its fingernails dig into the back of your leg, ripping open your beautiful handmade by Robin pants. Um, blood now mixing with the reflective material um, as it screeches. Ah! and three others begin to come out of that hole, swarming up around. What would you like to do, Scythe? Uh, You're walking? It, 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 All as right, long acrobatic. As it is still tall. Then, then tight, tight, uh, tight rope across for me. That is a, uh, I'm going to say a slimy 20. A <laughs> slimy 20. <laughs> I'm sure it is. This rope is getting covered with your blood as you go. Um, but with that, you are able to. It's not quite as graceful. There's a little bit of a limp maybe in your step, um, but you slowly make your way across. Now, all of these creatures, if you were to dare to look back and maybe Maeve, your headlamp is illuminating what they're doing, they seem to sense the shoreline, the edge of this puddle, and they don't really want to get too close. In fact, a couple that slide a little bit on the shale are able to sort of shimmy their way back up. Um, but they stand there at the edge looking at you, Silas, and the other two of you on the other side just... As soon as he gets across, yes. I drop the rope so that yes. the one that uh, was on the rope under him that took a swipe... Yes. Go, go take a bath in the oil. <laughs> <laughs> the rope drops uh, immediately. Uh, all of this stuff begins to, you know, just absorb that rope, pulling it in. You can begin to see it climbing up the rope towards the hole behind, um, almost chasing these other creatures that then <laughs> sort of snarl at you. One of them backs up, looking like it's going to attempt the jump. Can I growl at it and try to intimidate it to not come across? Like, I've just dropped the rope. I've dropped one of them into this thing. I'm standing there just like, don't Give me an intimidation me. roll as a, as a wolf. As, okay. So I don't think I have, I think it's just my charisma bonus. Charisma? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. If you, want, if you want to advantage it because you've got a, a motivation. That, that'd be nice. That'd be nice. Uh, I'm still <laughs> learning how to be. Okay. Uh, that's an 18. An 18. The first little growl you make is a little bit like puppy never used their voice before, but you find, <coughs> yeah, that deeper resonance that all, you know, canines possess. Um, and this sound that comes out of you as you're looking across again in the headlamp of the other two, you do see a number of them, especially the one that was about to jump, kind of <laughs> hearing that they sort of stop, take it in and sort of recognize a threat. They get still and turn, fight a little bit with one another as they begin to go back towards that open hole and disappear within the tunnel. I stop growling as they turn around to leave, but I'm gonna just stay there staring at them until someone <laughs> is, until I hear one of my friends start to leave and then, and then I wanna get out of here. Okay. <laughs> So what's ahead of us in terms of exits? So you turn and begin to look through this uh, space that you're in now. It's a fairly wide cavern. This one was definitely cut by man materials. Um, this is not natural. You can see the, you know, um, what are they called? <laughs> not pitchforks. Uh, <laughs> the pickaxe marks. Pickaxe, that's the word I'm looking for. Words. <laughs> um, okay, we've all got each other today. We've all got each other today. We're going to help with the words and the yep. order of the words. Um, yes, you can see the pickaxe markings in this particular tunnel. This is absolutely clearly part of the man-made mine structure. Um, and it's a, it's, a, it's a fairly wide tunnel going forward. And here, um, in fact... Maeve, give me an investigation. Uh, 
21. As you look around in this area and you kind of even peer just a little bit over the edge at this ooze, this ichor, you can see gold. And you can even actively see that this material, this substance, while it seems to eat through the organic material, the rock and anything sort of growing in this area fairly well, it does not seem to eat gold at all. If anything, it seems to be sort of uncovering gold. That's strange. Huh. Did y'all notice that there's, it's not touching anything that's gold here, and there's a lot of it there. <laughs> there's gold in them, our hills. There's gold in them, their Iker. <laughs> <laughs> Oops, so, Silas. Here, I didn't. I didn't notice it uh, when my leg was getting shredded um, just then. Uh, but um, I don't know. Maybe right, we can. Right, you're make... bleeding. Let's get some bandages on you. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll be okay. I'll be okay. This. Uh, this. I used to skin my knee like this all the time when I was playing. Well, basketball. unless the creatures can smell your blood and start following us. They can do that. I don't know. I've never met him before. <laughs> maybe we can make some armor out of gold, and then the ichor won't hurt us I mean at least helmets How? At, <laughs> at this point Nev is finally going to stop watching where these creatures yes. have left and I want to turn around and I want to start looking for how, how do we get out of here okay um, um, Nev are you are you stuck in that form or can you change back do you know she, she's looking around and then she gives you this look Oh no! And oh, I don't know how to describe this. Um, she, stuck? she looks angry. Mm -hmm. Is she gonna try to eat us? <laughs> <laughs> she she looks very angry. Okay. Um, and then is gonna go back to sniffing and searching around for how to get oh, out of here. No. Okay, so give me an advantaged sniff check. I don't know how we're gonna explain this to the others. I love it. Vintage sniff check. Let's do this. Which part? Oh, jeez. <laughs> Neb's stuck. Miss uh, Robin is going to be heartbroken when she finds out about my pants. It's dirty 20. Dirty 20. <laughs> so you start smelling, and you can smell um, your camp. Not too far away, even. You think probably just a little ways down in this direction. You can actually smell your rations your provisions the things that you brought you can smell your own you know sleeping bag that has your scent in it um just down the way um you don't think it's it's very far at all in this direction i'll turn back to the two of the two of you and go <laughs> <laughs> yes boy I don't looking know oh, clearly, clearly less well, clearly obvious timmy stuck down in the well <laughs> Looking slightly less angry, and then I'm gonna move in that direction. I'm gonna do. I'm gonna be lassie. I'll move in that direction. I'll stop. Let's, I'll be like, let's follow the Neb Wolf. Well, so let's think about this for a second. If this Iker was being sent through the tunnels to uncover the gold, what were they doing with it? Who sent it there? Where did it come from? Well, I mean, I mean they clearly had processing right? materials. <laughs> Gold yeah, what? I mean, they they probably just wanted to spend the gold. I mean, I think that part makes sense. But then, do we think that they were using the black goo intentionally? I mean, it seems to be an easy way to to process rather than using the full setup with the explosives. Though you know, equally dangerous, perhaps. I don't know. <laughs> um, this is. I don't know. Point. I don't. I've I've never been mining before. Is this? <laughs> Maybe, maybe this is the thing. Maybe this is technology. Man-eating ooze. The ooze that we saw, though, the uh, yes. the ichor. Um, yes. So, do do we think that it kept going down from where it is? Because I am all over the place. Like I am. It feels like I've been in a cave for three days. Yes. Um, yeah. and so, um, <laughs> so basically, we're saying that there was the ventilation yes. uh, pipe or whatever going up. Yep. Do we think that where the puddle was is the bottom of that, or did it keep going down into another pipe? You don't see, I mean, your phone got stuck 
before you saw any of this. Got it. So you don't have any idea, um, you know, what, where, where you got stuck necessarily. Okay. Um, but you, you know, this puddle of ichor is not going down, you know, it seemed okay, like it okay. was pretty stable. Now you didn't, you know, you haven't been here a long time. I didn't so you don't, or anything. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you're not getting the impression that there, there's not like a, you know, drain <laughs> whirl, you know, eddy in the middle of it or anything like okay. that. Okay. Yeah. Understood. All right. Okay. Yeah. So I don't know, Maeve, let's maybe follow the wolf that used to be Neb. You're making you've lost, you've lost all here. of your climbing gear in the process of this <laughs> excursion. I don't well, know if you have any more ropes. But, my uh, paracord's gone. <laughs> you've got nothing left. Saved my life so many times. Amazing. Um, all right. So if you follow uh, Neb Wolf, we will uh, you know, leave you as you turn your headlamps into the rest of this tunnel and begin to follow the wolf down the dark tunnel. And we'll go off to Feruza and Robin. Uh, so last we left you, you had just successfully uh, athletically jumped this crevice back onto Ooh. your side of the tunnel. Uh, Harold the hummingbird <laughs> um, yeah. had sort of descended down into that space, kind of leaving you uh, into the darkness. Uh, what would you like to do? Oh, all right. Can we just have a second here? My back is killing me. <laughs> Oh my God, just, Robin. Yes. How how is your how is your arm? Let let, let, me, let me see it. And Fruz is just gonna reach out like gingerly for Robin's arm. Yeah. You can wiggle and move everything though. Yes, yes, I think so. You want to know a cool secret? Did you know the nine tables when you're doing math? It's <laughs> it's very easy if you use all ten fingers. You're right. Yes. You bring down your first your first finger, and you've got one times nine equals nine. And then you do the second finger. So it's eighteen. You got the one and Robin, the eight. Robin, 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 Robin. Yes, yes. Sorry, what? <laughs> I need you to focus. Great. I want you to look me in my face right now, like you know, focus here. Focus. Yes. Do you, in all of your imagination and everything you feel? inside you right now believe that that hummingbird is Harold because oh. if it's not it's leading us to our death downstairs I believe that creature whether it be Harold or not was sent here to help us and now it has and I believe I'm hoping that is now its job to go find the others and help them the way it helped us. That is my, that is, oh my gosh. Are what? you okay? <laughs> Your face. What? Yes, what? what's on me? Ah! What's on me? No. Oh. You've got a, 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 oh, oh my goodness. Are you hurt? What? I know you got slapped very hard by that, <laughs> that statue. It's yeah, I, I did, I did. I mean, I, I, The bruising I is just starting to show, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Robin, you almost made me rip my clothes off. I thought maybe there was a spider on me or something. Um, I mean, I, I feel fine, but you know what the weirdest thing was? When that statue literally slapped me against that wall, I felt all the pain I could possibly feel in every part of my body at one time. But out of nowhere, it just sort of kind of abated. If that makes any sense. Like, it's almost like if someone just took your arm and broke it, all of a sudden it feels like a hangnail. Oh, really? Isn't that oh, crazy? Yeah. Tell me more about that. <laughs> no, I, oh, gosh. I, I'm sorry. I didn't mean, like, anything. Like, I, that, that was a scary crackle and pop that happened there with your arm. That, I mean, I, I felt, I, I, was, I was worried about you, Robin. I was you worried about stuck. you. You know what? This has been a great bonding moment between us. I feel so lucky to have had this time with you. Me too. And we and we succeeded. I mean, at least at least I think we succeeded. If success means releasing a ten foot killer 
that. Okay, 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 let's focus, let's focus. Because we have to find the others, because if they find out that the two of us left the opening of that hole to follow a bumblebee hummingbird, what are we following in? <laughs> Here it was, they're not going to be very happy, especially if they're stuck somewhere now because we took off. You're right. We have uh, the other puzzle. They'll be excited about that, so now let's just focus on trying to get back to them. Yeah. Okay, so... Harold says down, so we're down, right? Yeah. Mm, I think we should just go back this way. Harold is, is will come back to us in time. I don't think he wants us to go down this giant hole. <laughs> <laughs> Was he an indecisive man? <laughs> okay. All right. I, I'm gonna actually going to let you lead, uh, Robin, because you've been spelunking and a magician's assistant and a sewing and, and a bunch of other things. So I'm going to, oh. I say we go back to what we came, but let's do it fast. Right. Let's yeah. do it. I'm, okay. I'm, let's do it. Okay. Wonderful. Um, as you turn, leaving behind Harold uh, and the secret room with the secret saying, um, you make your way back, you start, you, you, the, the, find the tracks again that bring you back up out of the formerly flooded area, back to the area that you are familiar with. You come back to the trestle bridge that goes across. As you get to the trestle bridge, you do notice that some of the metal is sort of bent, almost as if something very heavy stood on it, creating little... Oh indentations in it as it crossed. Some of the wood planks are broken in a few places. Oh boy. But it Robin. still looks passable to you. <laughs> Let's not mention to the others <laughs> where the statue went. <laughs> we bump into them. I'm just kidding. <laughs> okay. Oh, wow. Uh, okay, so, well, good news. We know what direction it went. <laughs> Great news, we're going that same direction. <laughs> <laughs> well, at least we know we're behind it. Hopefully <laughs> it didn't head toward the opening of that um, thing we sort of left our friends to crawl into <laughs> without any backup. Okay, let's go. So we're gonna try to cross the, the now busted All bridge. Right. You, you, it's, it's, it's not busted. It's just no. a little wear and tear. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, you're able to cross it as you get to the side. You know, you've done this a number of times. You're careful. Yeah. You get to the other side of this uh, of this thing um, as you enter back into this this tunnel. And as far as you know, there are no other offshoots. As you come back to that intersection, you see the cave-in where your friends have been. Um, and, you know, this is all covered in rock. There's no evidence of it having been moved. Um, as you continue back towards the mine shaft, and still no sign of Steve. Statue Steve. Oh, that's what we're calling him now. Yeah, that's um, what we're we don't know. You get back to the debris of the, you know, you as you going down the other landmarks you pass, obviously, are this is this hole, <laughs> another crevice in the ground that mm -hmm. has this ancient piton in it. Um, the little nook where there was the little museum uh, display mm -hmm. of where you know they would have bunked. Um, and then the sort of destroyed debris at the bottom of this mine shaft, the, the destroyed um, mine elevator. And no sign of any kind of towering stone statue, animated stone statue. I hope they're okay, Robin. Well, Not know. Steve, our friends. Oh, thank you for the clarification. <laughs> I think if we were to think logically about this, okay. when one gets lost from another, it's usually a very good rule to follow that you go back to the, the place where you know everyone knows is safe. You try to make your way back to a spot we we all knew. So I think maybe we should try to get back to our camp. What do you think? Back to our, like like where our camp is? Like just never mind where we left our friends, just go back? I'm just saying there are many tunnels and things and either way, we should regroup ourselves. 
go back up to the, the top level. Do we have our climbing gear? We left it hanging here, yeah? Yes, your yeah, climbing yeah. gear is still uh, you know, available to use to go up and down the mine shaft. Okay, I mean, if we get up there and they're still not up there, we could always come back down and find our way back to the opening and see. Because maybe, maybe you're right. Maybe they had the same idea. Because mm -hmm. I remember when I was younger, I used to get lost in the supermarket because I would leave my mom and then she would go up to the front and check out and stuff. And then like Fruz is basically just starts talking about absolutely nothing. <laughs> I'm just like, oh, never mind. All right, we can, um, let's go back to the camp then. Great. Carefully. Or maybe they're crushed. You don't know. <laughs> uh, I don't want to think you about it. You don't know. <laughs> but I'm willing to entertain any possibility or suggestion right now because a little a few things are just going a little haywire and a little wrong i felt bad leaving harold but i also believe that robin knows her husband better than i do harold so. knew he he knew when to let me spread my wings and fly on my own he was never too pushy about things so. <laughs> good man it's good man okay. Okay. So plan is you would like to climb back up the mine shaft using your yes. rope and climbing gear and go back to home base. Okay. Yes. Um, so you've done this. You know how to do it. You are using the gear. You're able to climb back up. There's maybe oh. some slips and falls, but we can mm -hmm. fast track it a little bit. You're mm -hmm. on the ropes. As you come up to the top and sort of pull yourself up into this main space where you've been camping, you see all of your things off to the side, undisturbed. You also see giant footprints <laughs> in the dirt leading towards the snow opening, which has been blasted through. Um, the storm outside is still raging, but you can see, you know, like the Kool-Aid man, a giant <laughs> hole created in the snow that had risen up and <laughs> dug out, there is a large hole of passage out into the wilderness. It is quite cold. The wind is now, you know, brush and blowing into this area. Um, but you can see now that outside it is nighttime. Oh, it's nighttime. The whole day okay. has passed. You know what they say. Pay what it is? forward. <laughs> I think that we've just paid it forward by helping Steve. I have a feeling he'll show up sometime again and help us in the future. That's what I believe. What you just see is he's gone off into the, the, the yonder. One day we'll cross paths again. Wonderful. I'm trying to feel good about that, Robin. I'm trying. I'm, I'm going to feel good. I'm going to, you know, I'm making a conscious decision to feel good about that. We let Steve go off into the blue yonder to... Like you said, to experience. So oh God, I don't. I don't want to think about that either. I okay, love so. life and happiness. <laughs> <laughs> to live long and prosper. <laughs> oh yeah, that's what he did. <laughs> All right. Is there anything you would like to do? Would you like to make a? Would you like to make a fire? Would you like to long rest? Would you like anything that you'd like to do now that you're back at HQ? Um. um yeah, you go ahead, Fair. Do you have any ideas? Okay. Cruz just starts looking around to see if anything has been bothered. Like maybe the, the other three came back and mm -hmm. moved things around to mm -hmm. see if anything's been bothered. And she noticed that nothing has been touched, yeah, right? Been touched, yeah. Nothing's been touched. All we have is the new, like what said, like the Steve statue blaster. So that's all we know yeah. is that dude walked through here and kept it moving. Yes. We we don't know if he's coming back or not. So that, that's something to consider. But um, yeah, Robin. They're still in there. Well, here's the thing. What they always say. <laughs> Learn to let people go. <laughs> <laughs> um, what? What do they always say? That, that, what do they always say, Robin? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, but here we go. <laughs> they say something. <laughs> the head of a snake can never find its tail if they're both moving at the same time. 
it, 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 does that it. make sense? There's smoke coming out of Fruzy. <laughs> In a long day, Spruzy so just sort of day. flops down on the floor, and she like blindly, like she pushes her sleeves up, and she reaches into the her the whatever messenger bag she she brought with her to this, mm -hmm. and pulls out like a beef jerky thing. And Robin, you notice that, like she seems to be like you see a little bit of like the Wonder Woman sinew in her forearm as mm -hmm. she reaches, and she sort of just like. <laughs> thinking about snakes and tails and stuff yes. like that. Uh, what I mean is if they're running around trying to find us and then we run around to find them, I mean, there's a chance we could run into each other or if we if, if we just wait, maybe they'll find home base, we find home base. I don't know. It's, it's a toss-up. Hmm. I wonder if there's something we can do. Okay, so these caves... They're very echoey, right? Loud, echoey. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. Robin. Yeah. Maybe we can make like a, a really loud noise or something that will tell them that we're okay and that they need to, is that a bad idea? <laughs> Only if there were some creepy monsters that could hear really well, but that should be fine. I'm just going to sit here and continue eating my beef jerky exist. because my ideas aren't working. <laughs> I like it. There's no reason why we shouldn't be able to call out. I mean, as far as we know, there's been nothing here except for wolves in the woods and there have been other people and there's been rats. Yeah, I, I mean, yeah, but the rats like, know how to party. Yeah. If you want to make I a... I really hope I don't see another wolf anywhere. <laughs> if you want to call out to them, if you want <laughs> if you want to call out, maybe we could try it. You want me to call out? Okay, I'll do it. I'll do it. Um, Frisbe finishes her beef jerky and sort of stands up, brushes up, mm -hmm. <clears throat> straightens out her boiler suit. Yeah, still going. Walks over to the, the big hole that they originally went down. And I can't yell because I don't have a voice. Uh -huh. But she proceeds to just say, hey, you guys. Really hey, loud into you it. you guys. Guys, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. All right. Um, choo -choo. What are passive perceptions for the three of you? 15. A 15? 11. 11? 10. And a 10. <laughs> you guys don't hear it. Ow. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Um, <laughs> as you're as you're making your way through, now it's, you know, we're, we're, we're making this happen, but it's all good. Um, <laughs> <laughs> something about the way that the, the caverns are, um, you know, uh, created with one another, kind of, you know, inter interwoven too many turns, um, you are unable to make your way uh, into, you know, the sound is unable to make its way to where you are. Um, so we'll pause with Feruza up at the top going, hey, you guys. guys. <laughs> um, I'll offer too for, for Feruza and Hope, as you were uh, climbing up through the mine shaft, you got a, a sort of lay of the land here once again. So just something to sort of chew on as you're, you're uh, coming through here. Um, you were on that fourth level. You climbed up past the third, which is where the rat party was happening. Um, as you went past it, they're all sleeping, just like absolutely <laughs> sleeping rats. They're all just exhausted from the party. There's still a bunch of them there, but they're just kind of like chilling, you know, even you know you you even fancy in your imagination you could hear a little. Oh, that's so cute. They're very very <laughs> cute. Um, as you pass the second level, it's quite a long tunnel off in the uh, into the darkness into the direction. However, the first level on the opposite side is quite shallow. You can see just sort of the beginning, um, you know, little section of it. Then there's some large rocks. Um, very shallow little space, and then you made it up into the top area here. So we'll let that okay. uh, reminder of your sort of main shaft layout there as we uh, move back to the three of you. 
Neb leading the way, using your nose to kind of sniff and pull you forward. Um, uh, as you get closer and closer, uh, you know, you pick up a little bit of speed. The other two are following you. The, the whole tunnel begins to kind of open up quite a bit. Um, and as you make your way, you begin to notice the sort of slamming of, or not the slamming, you begin to notice again, the larger rocks, these places where the whole tunnel has been, you know, um, uh, blasted open, where major digging was happening in this area. And real quick around a corner, you see the mine shaft ahead of you. I'm gonna trot on over to the mine shaft and then like sit down at, at it, at are we at the bottom level or have we found ourselves at a different level? As you come towards the front of this, this area and you look down, you think you might be on the second level of the mine shaft. Hmm. As, you leave, you know, as you look up, you can see the sort of first level and even higher up, you think you see maybe Beruza standing at the top of the uh <laughs> of the shaft. Feruza looking down, you get maybe just the sense, is that a is that a dog? Is that a wolf sticking its head out of that, uh, you know, about 20 feet below you? If I think it's Feruza, I'll stick my head out even further. Be like, <laughs> and that's a little bit of oh. a blue tinge to its fur. Robin. So, oh, what? Um, do I see the wolf? Wait, you no, do. I see Yes, Feruza, oh, you okay. see the wolf. <laughs> it's like, wait, when the wolf sees you. Robin, come quiet. here. All right. Here's, be quiet. Quietly. Come quiet. here. What is it? I need you to look into the hole right now. I, I think I see a wolf. Except I'm, at that point, I've seen Feruza and I'm happy. Yeah. And so I've like moved back to look at Maeve and Silas. You were coming up. <laughs> little tail waggings. Neb, oh. what do your wolf eyes see? <laughs> I think... And then I'll stick my head back up. Pick up. I really hope she can turn back. <laughs> Bruce is going to go. <laughs> a Robin, wolf. A wolf. Do you have a, yeah, was that a do you have, I, maybe, I, I, do you have a granola bar we can throw at it? Do I see Robin? I threw all Robin my granola here. bars. You see Robin? Robin? Uh, <laughs> Neb is in in her in this moment of seeing robin is going to she thinks that she's um repeating what robin said that her alarm clock used to do it is hey hey don't you know that you gotta get up so you can get down so what you all you all see is this ridiculous wolf looking up going arr, 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 arr. does she think we can understand her do you think maybe <laughs> Uh, I mean, I can understand Wait. everything, can't you? I am. Do we hear that from? Yes, yeah, so if they're if they're talking, Silas and Maeve are now approaching the so, edge. If 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 yes. it looks like we're on the second floor, what's yes. around us? So this is just tunnel, and I said that like well, sort of blasted tunnel. This this tunnel has ha seen a lot of excavating and digging, and you know, gold mining. Is there any gear? Are there any? Is there any? Is there any writing? <laughs> writing would be great if there's writing. As you look around this area, um, there's there's no equipment, anything like that. You do the only thing that looks um, uh, sort of interesting or curious. There are a couple of sort of piles of rock that look like they've been prepared to be taken out and uh, you know. Um, used with the cyanide, whatever, you know, a process to get the gold out of them, but they've mostly just been left in piles. Um, but you don't see any writing. There's no equipment or anything here. Wait a minute. Are we on the second floor right now? You were on the second level. I was talking, I was talking to oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, Silas <laughs> right. is very bad with drugs. I mean, no, it certainly isn't the fourth floor. It's not the third floor. And so either the second or the first, and there's so, no space to go. So I'd assume so. So we need to... I mean, we need to find the clue while we're here because I don't want to come back here. I mean, like, it's all about efficiency at this point. All right. So. Well, wait, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. <laughs> Neb, what, what is it that you say? Translate for me, Maeve. You said you understand it. 
So Neva's uh, been sitting at the, the very edge of the mine shaft, done all of that, and she's been starting to think, oh, I, I guess I should switch back, figure out how to, because I can't climb these ropes. And then here's Silas talk about, well, we should keep looking for the, yeah. uh, the stuff and is going to turn around and cock her head at <laughs> you and give you this, you, you wanna look? Oh, God. We're here. Why uh, not? Yeah, let's let's do it. There's not but a ton of. I, I'm I'm gonna look out the opening at this point. Yeah, Thank and you. up above you see Feruza and Robin just peeking over the edge, whispering to one another. Uh, hey, 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 hey! It's hey. it's Silas. Silas. It's Silas. Yeah, so you see yourself up there? No, 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 no! It's Feruza and I think Miss Robin. Like it's hard to make her out, but it's definitely Feruza. She's giant. Um, Faruza, uh, Miss Ra, is is everybody okay? We're okay, except Neb is now a wolf, and I don't know if she can turn back. You're also bleeding profusely from the leg. Oh, it, your, your your pants uh, got messed up, Miss Robin. Oh, I don't know if you have your sewing kit with you, but I can fix that. I promise. Excellent, excellent. Just take um, them off and throw them up. She said she can fix the pants, so we're we're in business. Everything's okay. <laughs> I'm glad that was the priority. <laughs> well, I mean, the priority is making sure that Neb can turn back into a human, but um, but yeah, the pants. I mean, are pretty pretty close number two there. I oh, wonder what you you did a number two. <laughs> Actually, like I was just thinking about that the other day. We have all barely used the bathroom, or nobody's taken a bath yet. So that's another priority. That actually might be a bigger priority than the number. Okay. One, actually, do you need help coming back up? We can help you up. We don't have gear anymore, but we thought <laughs> while we were on level two uh, that maybe we should look around for a clue because we need all the clues a in clue. order to get out of this godforsaken place. Bless you. We found a clue. We, we did. We've got one. We did. You, got, you got a clue? Yes. Where, where did you get a clue? From a giant statue that is now on the loose. <laughs> There's a giant statue on the loose. It's okay. Robin. I'm just, sure writing, just to remind all our viewers, our, our listeners at home, this is happening over a 20 foot gap out of a <laughs> hole on one side, looking down into the hole from the top uh, with four humans and a wolf. Um, everyone is bloody and covered in sweat and dirt. I mean, you know, even looking at each other in the darkness and really starting to see, I mean, you have all been through something. Um, you are probably, you know, your clothes, those of you who got sopping wet are, you know, they're, they're dry, but they're, you know, um, crinkly and faded. And I mean, you all look a mess. Maeve, I, I don't mean to alarm anyone. And Neb, if you can understand me, I don't know. Um, I'd like to at this point trot on up to Silas. I'm just going to sit next to him and take my paw and I'm going to pat his foot like there, there. <laughs> oh, I think she can understand us. Um, she might be stuck as a wolf forever, but she can at least understand us. Um, but um, I don't mean to warn you. The issue hasn't ever been that she couldn't understand us. Well, I mean, I I don't know. I mean, I I haven't been able to ask her about that. Like we've kind of been busy with all this she, other stuff. She was talking to us about things we were saying to her while she was. But that trained. was when she was a rat. This could be completely different. She's That's a fair. Now. Um, but anyway, anyway, it looks like she can. She's understand. nodding and shaking her head. I I think we yeah. have some clarity on yeah. this. One. I mean, mm -hmm. earlier when I asked her, "Hey, like, can you turn back?" She didn't do anything, so I started to wonder. I was like wait a minute she's just looking at us like uh but anyway um at this point before a he goes on or yes. something or statue or something so let's be on the lookout so neb has just not wanted to turn back partially because it's just more comfortable as a wolf at this moment because yeah. she doesn't want to get back into her wet clothes and everything and also she's been feeling a little bit like this is a more advantageous form to be in because she's kind of weak and small but she's now seeing that uh, Silas is just getting scared, so I'm, she's gonna sit and think really hard about. Oh yeah, Ugh, I'm still wet. I'm sure. Oh, this is gonna be uncomfortable, but I really should and try to out as herself again. And there, sort of sitting with her hand on your foot, Silas is Neb. 
Oh, 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 thank heavens. Thank I suppose heavens. that's the answer to that question. Yes. I, I, so I just didn't want to turn back until I absolutely had to because. Uh... <laughs> oh, well, that makes sense. I hope, yeah. you didn't, I hope you didn't pop out on account of me. I, I think I was going to have to anyway, because I, I wanted to make sure that the, the acid thing that hit me, and then I'll look down and notice that that wound is gone. Yep. Oh. Yeah. Uh, oh. So, like, whatever happens to you in your animal forms, you don't, like, take those wounds with you? I, I guess not. I mean... Wow. Well, that's convenient. My, my leg... I mean, it still hurts, but my leg is okay. That is, like, how it works in a lot of video games. Um, so maybe I'm glad is... we continue to follow video game logic. I, I'm just saying, hey, by the way, you were a wolf when it happened. Did you see Maeve jump over that pit? Oh, yeah. No, uh, it was it, amazing. It, it was so, so MJ said that when you leave the ground, you fly, and some people fly longer than others. And, like, honestly, it's like I know she didn't do this, but it felt like a tongue was out. <laughs> and, and she was just like spread like like a jump man or jump woman. I mean, it was incredible. And um, I'm just saying, mate, I, I'm just saying I was a big fan of that. Well, thank I, you. I appreciate that. I was a big fan, too, but I was going to go more the Barishnikov route. <laughs> I, I don't know what you would prefer, but it was very uh, a ballet dancer. Oh, OK. <laughs> yeah. a very cultured conversation happening in a dirty mine here we go <laughs> so while we're down here on level two we should try to find um the, the information words. yeah mm. hey miss robin and feruza <laughs> do you want to join us as we look for this you look awful <laughs> we should regroup <laughs> you want us Maybe. to come up there yes I think we need to regroup and figure something out. Maeve and Neb, like, I, I really am. Um, I could be losing so much blood at this point that I'm not thinking very clearly. I offer to bandage you. <laughs> yeah, like, I think this might be beyond some bandaging. I might need to think really hard and like, try to use some of that, um, you know, um, magic that, that I've been doing lately. But it's like, I wanted to make sure that I didn't use the magic because there's one thing about this world that I am figuring out is that we don't just have unlimited magic. It's like, I don't know if you all feel this, but I feel a little bit tighter every time that I use some of the magic. And so it's not just like willy nilly that we can just do magic all the time, because I think that that would be overpowered in the grand <laughs> calculus of what's going on in this world. But it's like, we're, we're so you're like saying you have a finite amount of energy that you must calculate how much you're going right. to spend every day. Exactly, exactly. And so until we condition ourselves more, we can only use like a little bit, I think. And so um, I wanted to make sure that I didn't use all the energy in case like somebody got a really, really bad one. And so if somebody got a really bad one, then I could try to like, you know, use that healing magic maybe on them. But um, since we made it out alive for now, then I can maybe use some of that magic, but then we you can't probably... use magic on anyone if you're not conscious to use the magic. Uh, so you have to put your own mask on before you put other people's masks on. I, I remember what? that from yeah. What you have to you help talk? yourself before you can help other people. <laughs> Maeve's right. Silas is oh, never, you mean never like never flown in a plane? Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Airplanes are terrible. My goodness. <laughs> what I wouldn't give to be on one though, right now. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if they'd let you on one bleeding like that. Mm -hmm. yeah. Probably not. Well, do you want to see how much energy you can heal yourself now? Because we're going to have to climb up there without any of our gear. Yeah, I guess um, that's probably good. But then also, like, I do think, you know, Miss Robin seems to have a pretty good head on her shoulders. And so she says that we should regroup. And she was kind of, you know, I, I felt a little desperation in her voice when she said it. And so <laughs> we probably should, you know, uh, comply with that request. What do you think? I mean, I just think we're here. We might as well get ah, done Ah, see, I feel now. that way too. So and I wanted forward. somebody to talk me off that ledge. Maybe, so is but... there, is there, 
are there other entrances and exits to this room or is it just that one? Nope, this is the one is it... long tunnel that you've come down. Then it's got to be here. And there isn't so... on the other side of the mine shaft. This isn't one of hey, those where we should have No, there's not okay, one on either okay. side. This People is... hide yeah, things rocks. under rocks all the time. All right. Uh, are they styrofoam rocks or are they real rocks? These are real rocks. As you get closer, it's pretty clear these are real rocks. Oh, that yeah, makes that thing things more difficult. You know, yeah. Well, I well, don't know. How, how heavy are they? <laughs> I mean, you can go, they're, they're, you, know, you can lift them, you know. Um, are they less than 60 pounds? Yes. How long has it been since we, <laughs> since we uh, <laughs> were in the other place that had the. Um, you were, well, since you crossed the water? Yes. I think was the last time. More than an, I mean. I'm going to say more than an hour. Okay, that's fine. So yeah. for the next 10 minutes or so, okay, Silas is trying to move rocks that he can. And uh, yet uh, in the middle of this, he is practicing his, uh, you know, the energy bending techniques. Okay. Um, so as you are practicing and moving rocks, you do, there's a little limp on that leg. Um, and even, you know, especially maybe Neb, you know, a little holdover from your, your time as a wolf, you even think maybe you can smell something bad is happening with that leg. It does not smell good. Um, as you move the rocks, there is nothing underneath them. Is there anything around on the walls? Uh, give me an investigation check, please. All right. Ten. Ten. Uh, there's nothing on the walls that you can see, and something is sort of <sighs> biting at the back of your mind. You're pretty sure this isn't where you need to look. All right. You know, I think it would be helpful if we all regrouped before we looked any further. All right. And I certainly don't want to go back where the scary vampires are right now and that's the direction we'd have to go in to look for the 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 notices so why don't silas why don't you heal up and we'll figure out how to go catch so, up with everybody so let me let me that tell you gold what wasn't in a formation right that looked the the like gold any... that you saw um you want to give me a flat intelligence check to see what you sure recall as so, you think back to uh so neb here's what i'm thinking listen, like, I feel like I am really just kind of at the end of my rope. And if we go climbing and we fall without this gear, I don't know if I can telekinetically have the oomph to, to catch us if I heal myself right now. So, I mean, maybe we can just like sit down and rest a while. Um, I can like suck the poison out of the leg. I've seen that in plenty of movies. I'm sure that that will work. I I think it might be too late for that if you're poisoned, but huh, I I mean, you're going to know better than I will how hard it's going to be for you to climb up there with your leg yeah. like that. And yeah, what was your intelligence check? It was a 12. It was a 12. Um, the gold did not seem to be in any kind of formation for you. Um, but you do feel like if you're remembering they had mentioned that the the writings were always going to be at the deepest section of that level it's probably under the ooze yeah but what can we can we really trust those rats <laughs> i mean they they haven't let us wrong yet i guess that's true i'm gonna walk over to the mine shaft yep. again and look up are robin and Feruza still hanging out up yes <laughs> they're just waiting uh miss robin do you have any suggestions for making it easier to climb on up we don't have our gear anymore it's been a day <laughs> robin yeah. just dangles our equipment yep it, it's not a one size what well, is a one size fits all how, how, how far how far away are they though at that point so um essentially you would need to hook into their ropes which are on the opposite wall um so while if you were to hook into their ro ropes you wouldn't have to climb the 20 feet up 
you would still have to do the 10 feet around to get to their ropes and hook it. Are, are the ropes in a place, though, that after my bending manifest, after those mm-hmm. 10 minutes, oh, yes. I could grab the ropes? Um, hmm. Or are they, like, hooked in? They're hooked in. That's how they're, they're you know, careful and saving there. But I'm trying to think slack-wise. I would offer... That there, there's a world in which, you know, potentially you could remove some of the lower pitons that you don't need anymore, which would give it enough slack that you could bring it over. I am going to carefully and surgically start All removing right. pitons with my mind. And <laughs> uh, and then I am going to pull the rope over to ourselves. Okay. Uh, the, the, I guess our, there are only two, so it's the two of theirs. So I guess yes. we're going to have to go up two and then we're going to one. one. Um, so as you're doing this, you know, whether I, are you, do you sit cross-legged? Do you do you practice Tai Chi? How is it that you do uh, this? No, absolutely not that subdued. Okay. Um, it is, uh, you know, on the edge of it and it's okay. You know, pulling power to myself and then Fantastic. raising, l- lowering my hand. And, and as you do that, I'd like you to make a constitution saving throw. Hmm. Superb. constitution that is a 15. A 15. Um, the wound down on your leg starts to itch. Um, it, you just, you can just feel it getting kind of itchy. And every time you, you go down to sort of itch at it and touch it, it's very, very tender and it's quite swollen up. Um, you know, very, very, very tender there as you are, uh, you know, really don't want to put any weight on it any longer. All right, listen, I, I, I'm i pretty sure that I am turning into a vampire or whatever <laughs> one of those things are. I don't want to alarm anybody, but that's how this works. And so I got bit or clawed or something. I, I couldn't even see what was going on. I was trying to walk across a tightrope at the time, so I was not focused on what they were doing. But... Um, it's wounded me. It started itching. That's how it starts. They're probably they're probably inside me now. They might burst out of my chest. I don't know. But so, either way, yeah. What's that, Maeve? You're just saying we should dispatch with you then. Uh, well, well, I mean, <laughs> kind of. That is actually what I'm saying. So let me pull these ropes across for the two of you, and you two go up. And then if I know that you're up and safe, mm-hmm. then I will try to use any magical energy that I have left to try to heal myself, because then if I fall, then it's just me that's falling at that point. I'm going to turn to Maeve and show my shoulder because the that creature bit me before mm-hmm. I started doing all sorts of transformations. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm going to show it to her and say, it got me too. Does it look like it's bad? Is it itching? It is not. not. It looks, I mean, it's bad. You got bit. But as you go over and look at Silas's leg, there's something wrong with Silas's leg. It's a little green. It smells so, hey, did very you see, bad. Did they claw me or did they? They clawed you. So, so they clawed me and they bit you. Maybe their teeth are not poisonous. Maybe it's just their claws. They just didn't wash their hands. Might be. Sometimes I had a beagle one time. Uh, that they would get out into all the grass and uh, wh- what do they call that stuff? Ragweed? Yeah, ragweed. And basically any time that they would use the claw on me, I would get so allergic to it and it would like break my skin out. And so it's <laughs> it's basically like that, just like cave vampire version. Cave vampire version. But yeah, you, you two can climb up and then I will climb up last after I'm able to collect and, and and try to expunge this dark disease that's turning me into another creature from my body. I don't think you're turning into a vampire. I know they're not but... vampires technically. I wasn't going to correct you there, but like I do think that if we're going to be like, you know, visitors in this new place, like we need to make sure that we're tight with our language because like we might end up writing a book one day and we can't have people thinking that those are vampires. Well, you were the one who said vampire. I'm, I'm, I mean, that was a hasty thing in the moment. I'm saying now we've had time to reflect. And so they're more like, uh, I don't know, Morlocks or something. 
Well, whatever we call them, it, I don't think you're turning into one. I think you just are going to die. No, well, hopefully not. I, well, yeah, I hope not too. But I, I don't know if you should climb alone. If that's the, if you're, that well, you'll injured. all be up there, like you know, pulling me. That's what I was hoping for, anyway. So Feroza, Feroza will be up there so pulling. Feroza will be up <laughs> there pulling. Yeah, well, she's I mean, we should be honest about this, really. <laughs> <laughs> Not the older lady, the child. And the... <laughs> okay. <laughs> all right all right so uh do you want me to go first do you want to go first Ned? the two of you can go there are two ropes the two of you could go together all right yeah let's all try right. to do this as quickly as possible so that we can get silas up all right you hook yourselves in you've been climbing you have equipment it's 20 feet you know how to do this it's not easy but any slips you are caught um, and you climb your way up, making it to the top. Now, Silas, it's a little different from you, but for you because your circumstances have changed. Uh, putting any weight on this leg now is terrible pain. Is, they're up, though? At they're this up. Okay, so um, Silas, uh, this time, again, he doesn't, um, he definitely is not meditating or anything like that, but okay. he is sitting and he's, uh, he's like, well, get for a foam rubber right now and um and so he's uh he's kind of like looking at the leg and then he's like okay okay here we go i think i've got this i've got it and, and he starts to concentrate on uh, and i just need to check something with the spell real quick <laughs> go for it uh, as you are checking the spell as you look at your leg and you sort of pull open robin's pants to get a better look at it. Oh, I thought you were going to say the wound and I was No, like, oh, you're pulling up and, so oh, don't worry. Yeah. I'm going there, Adam. Just <laughs> take a minute. Okay. But you got to pull over on the, the path. path first, all right? <laughs> oh, this is, if you don't know anything yet about Debra, well, I am into the gross. I am into the gross. Hmm, Let's okay. do this. <laughs> you pull open the pants to get a better look at your, you know, the side of your leg, the shin and the calf. As you look down, you distinctly see four lines of, of uh, scratches deep into your leg, uh, half an inch. Um, you can see the muscle, the skin has been torn open at the sides. And what's really, truly disturbing, it's black and blue and green all around. And these little white pustules are growing in the tracks of the scratches in your legs. I, when when I say this initially, <laughs> no, I just let out like, ew, oh, yeah. oh, oh, uh, okay. And as you as you even just graze past them, <gasps> it just sends a jolt up your spine of pain. All right, listen. Okay, Silas, center yourself. Take a breath. That's what you always that you need to do this. So here we go. All right, listen. MJ said that some people want to make it happen. Some people wish to make it happen. Others make it happen. And with that healing word, okay. I um, am going to no, you're <laughs> hope, for, hope for high. Oh, there's the Oh, thankfully. Uh, okay, that is uh, seven hit points back. Seven hit points. Okay. So that's not a full heal. Definitely not a full heal. Okay. I rolled very well on mine. I'm sorry. Um, as the you watch it happen. What is your healing word? So it's it's those the, this mantra from from Michael Jordan that you say. Yes. And as it does, it begins to heal up the wound itself begins to knit together however these little white pustules of just captured ooze fluid of some kind they seem to refuse to to give in and even as it the, your skin begins to close around it terrible pain shoots through your body as if almost like squeezing a pimple or a, a cyst or something the skin just won't close around these little pustules that then pop <laughs> this white yellowish ooze beginning to bubble out of it and dribble down your leg um 
they hiss a little, singeing off any leg hair or the top layer of skin as these little acidic bubbles begin to uh, slide down your leg, unfortunately causing yet another... Oh, only one. <laughs> one little bit of acid damage on your leg. But with that, they are gone. All right. Um, they are gone. At they this are point? gone. Okay. They have popped. Um, it hurt terribly. Um, and these scars probably won't go away, but you are healed except for that one extra acid damage. Yeah. And so um, Silas, at, at that point in time, like even if he had to bite down on something, yep. uh, he was doing everything he could not to like let out anything because he okay. didn't want them to worry up, gotcha. uh, up above. Yep. And, um, and so then... Uh, he is going to reemerge at the. Uh, uh, it, is everybody still there? Uh, as soon as I got up, I would have been laying down <laughs> on my stomach, looking back yeah. down, waiting. Yeah. Hey, 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 I'm I, I, I'm okay. I'm okay. I'm not turning into one of those weird Morlock things. Um, I was, That's exactly I was... what a weird Morlock thing would say. <laughs> exactly let's leave him down there yeah, you, you make a very good point um you, you know what the only way we can be sure so that we can dispatch you if you are is that you need to come on up so that we can see okay so this reminds <laughs> me of a scene in one of the greatest films of all time i'm gonna climb up to you but please don't do any any kind of battle until i get up there <laughs> and then let me like dust myself off a little bit and then we can on guard okay in case I'm a Morlock, I'm saying. You can trust us. All right. And so we I won't kill to, you till you get here. Um, Rosa, to... do you do, do you mind maybe giving Silas a hand? You have my word. You will reach the top alive. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. so I am going to telekinetically pull the rope, uh -huh. Over the, your the edge. rope climbing gear to me. Hook in. I am going to hook in. And I'm going to kind of just swing uh, feet out to land on the side and right. then try to uh, start climbing up. All right. With you down below, mostly healed. Um, your leg is functioning now. There's no pain when you put it on there. Hair will not grow in that <laughs> acid track ever again. Um, it's a little reminder there. Um, but you are able to very slowly, carefully, gingerly make your way up. Feruza, especially up there, helping to sort of support any little slip. Um, yeah. You know, you feel really secure. One arm, second arm, pull your head up over the edge, roll onto the surface, and the party is back together. Oh, my God. As oh. Bruce just runs and starts hugging everyone. Like, oh. I mean, you guys smell disgusting, but I'm so happy to see you. Why and so you do wet? you, but I'm also happy to see you. And I will hug. And yeah. like, <laughs> as I'm gathering myself and um, I look around, do I see the, the hole that was left by the... Um, <laughs> The, oh, the, oh, yeah, definitely. As you look out, you now, yes, you see, you see a, a large, I mean, you know, the, the opening's only four feet tall, so, but it, you know, it made a tunnel leaving. Silas is almost like just about to just pass out, um, but, but, uh, but he's like, oh, yeah. And then he, <laughs> and then he like, he's like, all right, I need to take it. So the abominable story. snow monster then. Yeah. Not quite. <laughs> I don't know about you guys, but uh, I could really use a rest and some food and maybe to go to the bathroom. And a bath. I could use all those things, but I am desperate to know what happened to all of you because we've got some stuff to talk about as well, but <laughs> I, I can at least help with what one thing and she's going to think real hard about those delicious berries and... Mm -hmm. <laughs> <gasps> Berries are going to appear in her hand. Yay! Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> we just still working berries. on that roast, right? <laughs> Bev? I'm going to be honest. Okay. I was in such a hurry to get that done. <laughs> I, I just thought of the berries again. But next time, next time, roast beef, roast beef. Mm. And what do the berries do? One more time. So you get one HP per berry. Um, and it satiates you for your food and water needs for the day. Okay. And it means that now I'll have five extra to put in my bag for tomorrow. <laughs> so I'll just be doing that. Okay. Who wants to go first with the stories? 
well, let's like sit down all together here, like a uh, like like summer camp, and uh, so I can relax. And maybe Neb, you can do one of your little fire things. It's sort of muggy in here and still a little chilly because the storm is still raging outside, and we may or may not be joined by a large male statue. But that's another story. <laughs> Let's no, no, that's the, no, no, that's not another story. That is the the story. No, we, we weren't there. We didn't live there. Yeah, why don't you start with that story? Okay. Uh, all right. So there we were. <laughs> got her head we headlamp. She got her headlamp underneath her chin. Yes. <laughs> Submitted for the approval yes. of the Midnight Society. Yes. I call this the tale of Steve. Yes. <laughs> I love it. Perfection. <laughs> That's the name of the episode. The tale of Steve. for your approval. So, like, I guess, like, we just we basically yeah. account for them. Everything we're, you know, we're, you know, from the from the things lighting up mm -hmm. to to Steve crushing Robin's arm to Feruza, you know, shows them like. You know, I have, she's like, and she's describing this, like moving her hands and she's like this and like whatever. And like, like, you know, um, <laughs> and they get to the end and they talk about how Steve basically took off. And uh, then she says, but the beautiful part of it is what we got in the end. Robin, do you want to do the honors? Was it friendship? Wait. I thought you had it. <laughs> you I do? Oh, wait. Maybe I do. We Did I have it? Oh gosh! <laughs> and your post it. It your all post ends on the. We lost the. We clip. left. <laughs> we left it. We left it. <laughs> we left it. No, you brought it. You brought oh it. no, no! Robin pulls it out. Yeah. <laughs> She's like piecing it all together. Both of them. Post it note. At, at some point, Silas uh, really he does try actually when he hears about her arm yeah. to say, you know, Miss Robin, can, can I just try to see if I can make it feel better? And um, he tries at this stage and nothing mm. is happening. And uh, and Robin and, will will be like, oh, yes, thank you. That feels so much better. <laughs> you <laughs> really uh, are a gift no, to this world. Miss Robin, I know the difference. I know that I'm not doing anything, but I think that maybe my theory about we only have so much magical energy while our bodies are like tired i think that that might be holding some kind of of water here and so like maybe maybe tomorrow i can try you're carrying water with your magic uh i can carry lots of things well one thing i wanted to apologize is uh you know rob robin and i did, didn't mean to leave you guys but we sort of we bumped into harold and that's how we got off track her dead husband up... <laughs> yeah yeah. Wait, Harold? Harold yes. is here. Like, that's your... So we have Harold vampires is and zombies. Where is he? <laughs> he's, he's a hummingbird. Oh. Zombie hummingbird. A zombie hummingbird. Like, it sounds I mean, bad. In, in theory, it sounds bad. But I'm so telling you... So he has the power to turn into animals like no? Yeah, maybe he can teach me. That would be amazing. I believe he was just a spirit guide because he guided us to where we needed to be. And and then he, he left when when the time was done and we had done what we needed to do and just needed to get so back to wait, you. He took you into a place and got your arm broken. <laughs> and then he just split after that? Well, like Robin <laughs> always says. <laughs> Every snake has a head and a tail. <laughs> Did Harold day. turn into a snake? <laughs> no, 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 take that off your repertoire. Was it the head or the tail? Oh, no. Well, hopefully both. It'd be very disturbing if someone only turned into the head or the tail. <laughs> what is this is disturbing saying? It well, is. <laughs> yeah, this one time I was the tail of a horse, like at a Halloween party. Oh. Like, you know, you see that in movies, right? And yeah. it's like, you know, it, it's not as, like, glamorous as that. We don't even need to make the joke there. Yeah. Feroza, you didn't leave us. We got trapped on the other side. There was going to be no way that you could come for us. While I was crawling to my certain death, I was really, the thought that kept me going on is that you and Miss Robin were safe. Oh, well, 
what do you, I mean, what exactly happened to you guys? We, we tried to scream and we heard nothing. And then boom, 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 like an earthquake. And we were, we didn't know what happened to you guys. Robin and I were really, actually really worried. Well, there was a cave in, there was a flood. There were eyeless creature zombies, I don't know. It was, it was a full on biblical plague situation. <laughs> yeah, uh, they, they weren't vampires though. That we know more of. of more of the ooze. Yeah, than we saw before. The wow, acid. you guys really got the short end of the stick. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. <laughs> we got out with any broken arms. So. Uh, we got shafted. Oh, <laughs> shafted. Oh, yeah. Oh, but now we can mind. compare. We can compare <laughs> scars, and I'll lift my shirt where I've got the claw marks, and be yep. like, yep. Ah. Wow. I, oh. I got I think I got one here, I think. Oh, I never have to shave inside. again on my leg. <laughs> what? Your leg? Yeah. Do you see my pants right here? This is not disco. These were <laughs> split. Miss Robin, like seriously, you know, other the only thing that I can think of that I would want uh more and that I treasure more than these pants is my hat, but that obviously is never coming back. And so um if there's any way that you can fix these pants, maybe tomorrow, I'll try to fix your arm a little bit. If you can try to fix my pants. Absolutely. She's going to sew up your pants and you're going to sew up her arm. Oh, I um, hope I don't sew it. That sounds terrible. But uh... <laughs> you keep, you keep talking about the hat. Why don't you just wish it back the way you did with all the other things that you've been manifesting into existence? Wait. Maeve's not wrong. Although you might have to wait until tomorrow after you've gotten some of your energy uh, back, I guess. But no, that's, that's, that's a good idea, right? Now. Like you're saying, yeah, like, so Neb just is like, oh, I want to be a wolf. And then she turns into a wolf. Yeah, keep talking could... about your magical powers and your telekinesis and your wishing to do things and they keep happening. So object manifestation could be one of the superpowers really? yeah i think i i think it's worth a try Accio just don't yeah. manifest something busted just like work on it make sure you're sure because we don't want you to manifest steve he's out there somewhere he's gonna <laughs> and come also back. how are we sure you're not a morlock uh Did we yet come to that conclusion somehow? hey i you know i don't know there are no uh what are they called pestules or something or the pustules um, on your pus leg pustules <laughs> Um, there, there are no, yeah, that, that's a nasty sounding word, but there are none there on are my leg. There are nasty anymore. things. <laughs> yeah, but there are none on my leg anymore. So basically what I can say is I can't guarantee anything. So if you need to tie me down while I sleep tonight, just in case I, I submit to that, I'm fine. Or why I, not? We just don't let you take watch alone. Mm, that, that's a good idea. That's a great idea. Yeah. You probably shouldn't do that generally anyway, because I get distracted very easily um but um uh, but yeah very very good idea tonight just in case and so this All is right. the clue the clue we'll version that. whichever pair person dies yes <laughs> that's the murderer that's the murderer mr body that's what the next episode is no. yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well okay so the good news is we now have two full Clues. Of the four levels, right? Yeah. So, oh, we're halfway there. Oh, <laughs> oh, the and so if we are taking a short rest, if this qualifies as that, he starts singing that song very loudly and off key. <laughs> um, but it will allow anyone spending hit dice to uh, add 1d6 extra to that. Um, yeah, you all are welcome to short rest if that's what you'd like to do. Um, it has also been eight to ten hours <laughs> since you were up you are welcome to long rest enough time has gone by if that's also what you would like to do i'm gonna um, long rest start. all right so long okay. resting is happening okay Yay. um for a long rest yes we'll work out some uh watches Perfect. if that's what you'd like to do and we'll uh, work our way through Perfect. okay i will take advantage of silas's short rest yes so that way i can uh, he, yes. In case uh, we get attacked or mauled. Yes. While gotcha. we're and exactly. 
Exactly, because I'll I'll take the first watch. I'm still a little uh, excited about everything that happened, and so I don't I don't mind staying up a little bit later. All right, Neb is uh, Neb going to do it alone? Well, I mean, I did just say that nobody should take watches alone, but it's it's there's only six of us, so I don't know what we want. I mean, to I, do. I'll do it with yeah. you, uh, Neb, because I'm re- really wired, and I'm not going to be able to just go straight to sleep. Um, so I'm I'm fine to do it, you know. All right. First with you as well. I Neb mean, and if Silas you are up. if you do turn into a Morlock, I'll just turn into a wolf again and take you down. There you no, go. I, I, I believe it. I mean, you might want to yell at everybody else where they know what's going on first, because waking up and just seeing a wolf duking it out with a Morlock like that would probably be confusing. Hey I mean, everybody, a little. If you see that, I'm the wolf. <laughs> Yeah, okay. For some reason that's not comforting, but okay. All I'm right, really who's up next? You guys. Um, I, I, I can I'll definitely take, take next, solo next watch. watch. Yeah, I, I'm oh. happy to take a solo watch. Maybe tonight. you want to do solo in the middle? Sure. Okay. 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 All right. Then Feruza uh, and yeah. Robin, you want to join her? <laughs> how, how many more watches do we need? We don't. You don't need it. Three. Three will cover you. Oh, so okay. everyone will get the eight hours. So you don't have to. But you'll also have had eight hours at that. Point, oh. So. Okay. Then Perfect. yeah. Totally. Okay. Great. Okay. All right. Um, mm-hmm. With everything figured out, you take your hour to listen to Silas's song. Uh, mm. Just tend a little bit to your wounds. If you know Neb and Silas as you're going first, and, and Maeve, in case you want mm-hmm. as well to heal up just a little bit. You put on some bandages, you clean things out after seeing and hearing oh, yeah. what happened to Silas. You feel like cleanliness might help some of your uh, issues here. So using some of the clean water and the some, snow. Some to- like some some wet wipes kind of thing. Yeah, moist that kind towelette. of thing. <laughs> yes, yeah, some moist towelettes to uh, to clear, you know, clean up a little bit. Silas understands that everybody always likes a good fresh towel Mm -hmm. and so like early in that process (laughs) Mm -hmm. he goes over with his bag and wrings them out as much as he can like (laughs) and then he eventually goes around and hands them to everybody but they're like frozen and uh you know kind of and they're kind of crisp and he's like yes nice crisp clean towel and then (laughs) neb will light up her hand and say oh wait let me warm that for you hey she torches all of them Thanks, um, amazing yeah we you very carefully dry and warm the towels everyone has a clean towel with which to sort of clean themselves you do still have some mres some granola bars okay. some jerky that was left up there um mm-hmm. you know most of your packs have some waterproofing mave specifically you know made sure to pack hers so that hers was so most of your things are salvageable might be a little bit drying out but you have most of your things it's mostly just the three sets of climbing gear that are just gone rope is gone all of that unless you want to go retrieve it that's up to you oh my gosh and my phone phone and your phone yes phone is gone uh Um, during during robin's watch she's yes if if it's okay she's gonna um she's gonna be hemming up hemming up with pants okay fantastic yeah all right i want to do on my watch when when Fantastic. Yeah, we'll come to it. So everyone uh, settles down except for Neb and Silas. Okay. As the others begin to drift off to sleep, You, how would you like to spend these four hours? What is your instinct? Oh, no, no, no. I'm awake. I'm awake. I'm awake. I didn't doze off. Oh, and you're uh, I can't muted. Hear you. You gotta speak up. <laughs> sorry, sorry. I'm making sure that the, the people that are here are not uh, I'm, a, I'm, a I'm making so sure much that the rap party. The other day. <laughs> Listen, the rap party, it, it's going again, and I just, I was trying to make sure you, you weren't disturbed. They're by back it. at it again. I mean, they're, they're party rats. It's a rager. <laughs> I wonder hey, how those little little rats are doing. Like, I feel like since I'm their prophet and everything, I need to, uh, you know, shower them with gifts or something. I mean, we can check on them tomorrow, but yeah, I don't. Yeah, we can. Yeah, let's think about checking on them tomorrow after we find the other two messages and do everything we need because yeah, I'm we can always to get out of this cave. Yeah, I want to make like too. Statue Steve and bust out of here. I kind of want to follow it, them, him. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, we're but... calling it Steve, so I guess 
him. They is appropriate in any context. So yeah. Yep, and um, it's a statue. I, you know. Yeah. But I so, kind of want to follow them. I wonder if it could become our ally, and then if we get attacked by Morlocks again, it can just like pound them to a pulp. That'd be nice. It would have been nice to have a statue on our side during that yeah, fight. Yeah, <laughs> but it might it might not be it might not be friendly though because it like broke Miss Robin's arm. So. But didn't they say then once they would figure things out, it thanked them before it yeah, left? Maybe. Sometimes enemies can come, become, you know, allies. That happens all the time. Enemies to lovers. The yeah. story of Steve. <laughs> I, w- I would buy that rom- romance novel. <laughs> yeah, I, really I would like. totally. The story yeah. of Steve. She, enemies she found to her lovers. other lover out here, and her other lover is a hummingbird. That's... I kind of wonder if there is someone else out there who can turn into other animals. I would love to have someone to learn from. We've all been kind of making this up as we go along. And I, I think you, you've you all been doing amazing things, but it would be nice to you have You all some... have been? Like, you don't think you have been, Neb? It's been fun. Absolutely. I think I've, I mean, I've done some... It's completely incredible. I mean, well, like, do you think you could be something that can fly? I, I don't know. Do you want to try some stuff out? I, I don't know. Can you try stuff out now? Or are you too tired? Uh, I'm tired, but I, I feel like I had a uh, yeah, I had a little bit of a rest. Let me let me let me try. What what should I what should I try? I don't know. Like I'm so tempted to say dinosaur. Like really, there, <laughs> any answer is right when it comes to dinosaur. But well, like, let's I don't know if you let's start. Dinosaur. Let's start with simple stuff because I. I'm still figuring out how to do this, but yeah. I I feel like the the clearer I can picture the animal in my head, the better it works. And I'm worried that if I picture something wrong, that I'm going to end up like that oh, snake yeah. that yeah. only has a head or a tail. It's like my mom used to say, if I cross my eyes like that, they would get stuck that way. Mm. You do not want that happening with this. And no. so what if, so what, what what's your favorite animal? What are you going to be familiar with? I mean, those are two different questions. I've always wanted to be a pangolin, but I don't know if I could picture one of those well what enough. What did you just say? A pangolin. Have you never are seen you, them? Are you saying penguin? No, pangolin. Pangolin? Yeah. Are you just making that up? No, there are these amazing animals. That, that, they're really big. They kind of look like dinosaurs. That's that's what, what? made me think of it. They Why got... are they named after penguins? No, not penguin, pangolin. They're, pangolin. they're really endangered. I, you know, we'll talk about it later. I've, but that's kind of my favorite. But I don't know. I, I mean, I can. Made up, Neb. I mean, I kind of want to see it for you to prove that it's real. All right. Well, here we go. Let me give it a try. I'm gonna try to turn into a pangolin. <laughs> uh. I don't know how successful I will be. You don't. You don't. You, I don't think you can quite yet do flying animals, can you? Well, the pangolin doesn't fly. Oh, it doesn't fly. <laughs> I. So it is a penguin. <laughs> no, no, pangolin. pangolin. Okie doke. Um, well, in that case, um, I mean, let's do. Let's do a history check. Okay. To see how well your like research or you know you've seen. Some I would help you on this, but I don't. No, this is only. This, is. this isn't it. What'd you roll? I rolled a natural twenty for Boom! twenty-five. You are obsessed with pangolins. You have watched every documentary, read every book. You even like you were in a weird place where they happened to have one. You know, like in a in a in a museum or a, you know like a taxidermied or something like that. So you actually have like seen these and successfully if you have enough uh, wild shapes left pop into one <laughs> because we took a short rest you I do, do. Woo! so yeah you you, you oh. watch and she thinks really really hard and then all of a sudden there is a, a fairly large i mean it would be a medium-sized reptile on, on oh back my legs with like little gosh. little tiny front legs <laughs> and all the scales oh and the Idiots. tail and it's and then <laughs> It's adorable. Neb, you are hideous, but and, and, and <laughs> like I don't mean that in a bad way. You're like it's incredible that you can turn into this make-believe animal because that means if you can turn into make-believe animals, 
that means that you like you can turn into like probably like a griffin or something or i don't know a chimera or um like a displacer beast there was a game that that i play all the time it was like uh it, it was it was a weird weird creature but it's like if you can turn into made up things that is incredible neb is is both super excited to be her favorite animal and then also very distraught that that her friend thinks that this is an ugly creature and she's been trying to look at herself right. and and unintentionally curls up into a little ball and all you see is just a ball of scales this little ball of scales and silas sitting there as well as this is all going on and you're sort of marveling just off in the distance you know a very lonely Neb pangolin made up creature. Do you hear that? Do I? Um, if I did, then all of a sudden Neb is just sitting there again. Okay, Neb pops back. From did outside. you say that? Uh, yeah, I mean, I heard that. I don't know. Was that a wolf or was that? I mean, it sounded like a wolf, but also I've very quickly learned we shouldn't assume anything. Right because it could be somebody else turning into a make-believe animal. I mean, maybe it's Harold. Maybe Harold has turned into a wolf and is out there. Harold, the arch druid of, what are we going to call this place? <laughs> Steve's mine. Maybe no, it's Steve's I mean, world. Like the world. I mean, Steve's world. That reminds me too much of Minecraft or something. Um, <laughs> yeah well, anyway we can workshop it but um do you think <laughs> we should investigate or should we stay here like well-behaved watchmen and women peruza grimaces in her sleep <laughs> in her sleep she wakes up sees sees neb and goes i'm going back to sleep <laughs> silas Just, yeah. nope not a, back to sleep silas i'm i'm gonna be honest really would love to run on out there and see if I could find out what's going on with those wolves, turn into one, talk to them, but it's probably not a good idea right now, just in case you turn into a Morlock. Yeah, I mean, oh yeah, that's true. I mean, we do have responsibilities here. I don't know why, but I feel an intense amount of, you know, companionship and responsibility. It's, it's kind of like that that movie with Sandra Bullock and Keanu where it was like they went through a really stressful situation and then they were like, you know, bonded like forever. And it was only like, I don't know, they were on that bus for like an hour or something. But like they felt like they'd known each other for years. That's the feeling that I'm getting with all of you. I mean, I feel the same way. And if if that movie, if it was only an hour, I mean, we've had four days. <laughs> plus two, plus two. I've got to save my energy because I am fairly convinced at this point that if I really, really manifest all of the magical energy that I have in the morning, then I am going to be able to do the object manifestation and my half is going to be here. Well, then we should definitely, definitely stay safe because I would hate to rob yeah, you mean, of the chance to get your hat back. Creepy sounds out there are going to be there tomorrow. That's the thing with problems. They're always there tomorrow, right? That's no, you're absolutely right. And Neb will just keep yeah. every once in a while side-eyeing, but she will stay. So as you spend the rest of your watch just chatting about magic and life and animals and every once in a while hearing that lonely howl from outside, uh, your four hours are up. As you lean over to wake Maeve, we will take our break here and say thank you everyone for spending time with us today with Children of Erte. That's the end of this chapter. And please remember that life itself is the most wonderful fairy tale. Good night, everyone. <laughs>